we say we know, but you're not supposed to know. That's supposed the to, point. You're supposed yeah. to have faith. Like if you, it's a paradox. If you know something, then you don't have faith. And then you've got to you've got to take that next step and develop the faith and find the next thing that you don't know and and work through that. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Saints Unscripted. I'm Wilson. I'm one of your hosts today. I'm here with Cam and Lauren, and today we're going to tackle a question that people a lot smarter than I have have been wrestling with for centuries. So we're here today to scratch the surface a little bit and talk about truth. So with that in mind to you guys, if I were just to throw out the question, what is truth? What's your knee-jerk reaction to that? Maybe this is a diff- or the wrong place to start, but I think what's tough with the church is not with the church, but with religious and spiritual experiences in general, is they're so metaphysical. They're they're Mm -hmm. something that only you can experience. I think religious texts make that pretty clear. And I think that's on purpose. If you could verify it with facts or with evidence, it wouldn't require as much faith. Uh, And so we know in the church that in order to have a testimony, you have to put in the work, you have to have spiritual experiences. And that's something that you can talk about, but you can't really give to somebody else. And So when we say, I believe the church is true, like that's, that's your own experience talking. Mm -hmm. And it goes there. I think there's some conference talk that's like, describe the taste of a strawberry to someone that's never tried one. Mm -hmm. Kind of the same thing. You feel the spirit in your own way and you have to learn how to recognize that. And it's, I think it's intentionally difficult um, because once you've figured it out, it's hard to deny, Mm -hmm. but it's, it's not an easy place to get to. Yeah. And that's true. But at the same time, you can also give them the strawberry and be like, you can taste it for yourself and you can kind of like have your own experience with that. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. I completely agree with the um, idea of it can be difficult and it's not something you really know till you feel for yourself. In the beginning, when I first converted, it was really hard for me um, to be able to go up to the stand when I shared my testimony and say something like, I know the church is true, or I know the Book of Mormon is true, which is something a lot of people say when they share their testimony. And for me, it was just that I I always had a hard time with it because faith is such a big part of it. So I would say instead, I choose to believe the church is true. I choose to believe the Book of Mormon is true. Because I felt like, especially in the beginning, it was something I had to wake up every day and make a choice to believe this and do things that strengthened my belief. If I had questions, research it, ask people, you know? I understand why people say that. And I've heard from some people it's more cultural to say that than it is like you know, you have to say this, or if you don't say this, you don't actually believe it. Um, but it's just something I found interesting. And I wonder if anybody else has ever thought about that. Like, no, I don't yeah. know if I could say that. You I know? distinctly remember having a study session on my mission where um, I was journaling or something. And I was like, I know the church is true. And I stopped. I'm like, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. What What am I saying? And then I spent the next hour, like breaking it down. And I'm like, okay, we say the Book of Mormon is true. What does that mean for me? Mm-hmm. Does that mean that all of the words are historically historically accurate. Does that mean it's verifiably true that someone lived here at this moment, right? Or are we talking more? Are the doctrinal principles true? Right. Mm-hmm. Are it was Joseph Smith telling the truth about how it was translated and how it was found? Mm-hmm. There's so many different facets, and I think I think it's really good to get specific when you're talking about stuff like that because. Then it gets you out of the repetition that we get into in the church sometimes. If I know it's true, I know it's true, and it's true, but then you just, it loses its meaning. Yeah. Right. And it creates this sort of like, at least for me, it created this distance where it's like, well, all these people know, like they know, when you know something, Mm -hmm. you know, and I believe it and I'm choosing it, that that made me feel almost a little less like a member, Mm -hmm. you know? So I just feel like there's stronger ways we can share our our testimony of that. Like, I don't know, what are some examples of you could say instead of, I know the Book of Mormon is true? Well, I feel like for me, I think this is something that everyone really should grapple with. It's like, for example, for me, whenever I've thought about, you know, the church being true and what that actually means, for me, it's meant that I know that the church is where God wants me to be. Mm. I know that in the church, I'm going to become a better person. I'm going to develop. Through covenants, I'm going to come closer to Christ. I know that is what God wants for me. So that's, I guess, what the church being true is for me. That's what I've come to discover. Yeah. And for me, that's a lot more significant and impactful than just saying, I know the church is true and moving on and just kind of 
almost brushing it off in that way. Right. You could say things like the Book of Mormon has brought me peace or the Book of Mormon has changed my life in X, Y and Z ways. Mm -hmm. That I feel is not only more impactful, but it also helps those who are listening who haven't quite got there yet while they're on their journey there. Right. For me, the Book of Mormon is one thing that I've like I I struggle with other points of doctrine uh, as far as my testimony goes. But the Book of Mormon for me is one that I, I feel like I can confidently say I know this to be true through my own personal spiritual experiences. And I think explaining mm-hmm. maybe the story behind that yes. is it gives context to how. Um, but it's it's Moroni's promise. And I've experienced that where I've I've read the book and I've prayed about it and I've had the spiritual confirmation over and over and over again. Um, and because of that, I believe and I, I feel like I can say I know it to be true. And if you're going to go up to the stand and say that, I want to hear everything that, else right. exactly. because that's helpful. And and I feel like some people have that gift a little bit stronger or have cultivated it stronger. Like um, there's a friend of mine who has never once in her life been a member her whole life, never questioned the church. She just knew from the beginning. And um, she firmly believes that she has that gift. And then there's some people who have other spiritual gifts. You know, there's people who just know without a shadow of a doubt. Yes. And they've known their whole life. And then there's people who can discern and there's people who are healers and all these other things. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's just, yeah, I mean, perfectly fine to say, I know the church is true. I know the Book of Mormon is true. I just want to hear the other stuff because that's what makes up your testimony and why you're here. Right. And it could help me or other people. Along and I think the way. that's so much more impactful than a story about a trip you went on or right? <laughs> like if you can yeah. tie that in quickly, mm-hmm. that's great. But the most, the most poignant testimonies that I've ever heard have been 30 seconds long and they've been, um, I read, I prayed, I I got this experience and I know it's true. And then they sit down and the spirit's like, yes, perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think in, whenever we're sharing experiences like that, it can also promote that in other people. Just if it's that simple, if that's how they've experienced it, that's something I can try too. And I think that's going to be so much more impactful, like we said, than just saying, I know the church is true and moving on. Right. Because it is so much deeper than that. And what you were saying, you were basically quoting was it Alma 32, the faith chapter, right? If mm-hmm. you know something, then there's no cause for faith. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. need for faith. And th- I think that's what always bothered me too. I was in the same boat. It was like, we say we know, but you're not supposed to know. That's supposed the to have, point. You're supposed to have yeah. faith. Like if you, <laughs> it's a paradox. If you know something, then you don't have faith. And then you've got you've to take that next step and develop the faith and find the next thing that you don't know and, and work through that. Mm-hmm. And some things we won't know, and that's okay. And I do love what you're saying there about like that's where faith faith comes in, right? Yeah. Whenever you don't know, but you're still going to church, even though you don't know. And that's but an you act believe. of faith. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's where the faith comes in. And standing and up that. and saying, "I believe this to be true," or "I I know," even even if you don't fully know, mm-hmm. saying like, "I know enough." I know enough. Yeah. One thing I heard someone say while sharing their testimony is, this is where my testimony is at right now. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, Mm. amen. And I thought that was so beautiful because, yeah, right now, it's going to waver. It's going to change tomorrow and the next day. And as you have trials in life and things are confusing and you grow and mature and questions come into play, it's all going to change. And I think that's beautiful. I think something, I think this is why the youth of the church and our generation is so impactful is... Gen Z and Gen Alpha are better at previous generations at saying what they think and and being genuine and real and authentic. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think that applies to the church as well, right? Like it's kind of a problem in workplace cultures with the the older generation because they're not necessarily used to people just coming out and saying what's on their mind. Did you mean millennials and Gen Z or Gen Z and Gen Alpha? Both. I, I think I think younger younger kids are brutally honest. That's facts. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. Yeah, millennials too. But but in a workplace culture, there's a there's a level of authenticity that mm-hmm. hasn't been there in the past, and I think that's translating to the church where our generation is more willing to have difficult conversations and say maybe I don't know everything and that's okay. Yes. But I'm going to keep showing up anyway. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's that's not a knock on older generations. That's just something that I I've seen. Yeah, Yeah. I see that. I appreciate that you bring other generations and our generation into this because something I do want to bring up is the difference between this phrase that has gone around for a while, speak your truth versus speak the truth. I did some research on it. I don't know exactly where it originated from, but it's been used in different contexts. It's been used in contexts of like trying to heal from an abusive past, which I think that's great and it can be helpful to a degree. Um, And then it's been used in contexts of like, 
staying woke, essentially. Mm. So um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on the phrase speak your truth? Do you know anything about it? I've heard I've heard about it and I've had I've seen obviously movements on social media talking about speak your truth. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it per se, but I feel like that sort of understanding of truth could be um, problematic. Problematic. Yes, that's what I was looking for. Just because when everyone has their own truth, I feel like for me, it just makes sense that there needs to be a source of truth. If everyone's coming up with their own individual truths, how do we actually know what is correct, what is accurate? If everyone has their own individual like opinions and views. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like that could be problematic. And that's why God being the source of truth makes so much sense to me is there is a, ref a refutable source of truth that we can rely on, that we can tap into and understand, because that's going to keep us steady. That's like a, a foundation of truth for us to build upon. Yes. Because without it, things are just going to fall. You just went into that with your, your belief in a higher power, mm -hmm. right? And so when you're having a conversation with somebody and you say, I believe this to be true because I believe in God and God gives the source of truth, that can get circular really quick. Mm -hmm. It's right? true. It's true. And so I think what people are saying when they say speak your truth, which I have a problem with because I, I feel like it it shuts down conversation before mm -hmm. it can even start. It's like, oh, I accept everything you believe, but I accept everything I believe too. Mm -hmm. And then you're you're not engaging. You're just staying yes. in your spot and you're like, I'm fine exactly where I am. Whereas a better conversation would be this is what I believe to be true. And these are my experiences that solidify that. Right. You have your experiences and I recognize that I might be missing some things. Mm -hmm. Where can you help me fill in? Because I'm open to new truth mm -hmm. and I will reject the things that are no longer true because of the, the evidence that's presented. And where can I do the same for you? Right. And I love that because I feel like there is truth all around us. There is not just all truth within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I believe that the church is the place for me to be, but I don't think that we have a monopoly on truth. <laughs> I think there's things that we can learn from everyone, just like you're saying. So when we're approaching conversations like that as like, what, what can I learn? Like, what sort of truth do you have that I can cherish as well? I think is such a great aspect or a, such a great paradigm for us to be approaching these conversations with. Right. Because we are a church of continuing revelation. Mm -hmm. We recognize that we don't have everything and it would be foolish of us to, to go in with that assumption. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, there are some things based on our personal experience that we believe to be absolute, right? We believe that God is real and we believe that he speaks to us. Um, and then if someone comes in that conversation and they're like, okay, I don't believe there is a God, then the conversation is, okay, let me share my experiences as to why. Let me listen to your experiences as to why you don't think there is. Mm -hmm. And we'll try to come to some mutual understanding. Yeah. Yeah. I had really interesting experiences with people who were atheists on my mission discussing this concept of truth. What do they know is true and how do they know it if they aren't relying on their religious beliefs? How do they know that something is true and something that isn't? And I've learned really interesting things from these conversations. Mm. So I feel like there's a lot to be said there. There's, I don't remember where it is, but someone said, I respect atheists even more because they are attempting or they're doing the right thing purely on the basis of doing the right thing not not because of some external pressure mm -hmm. where religious people are like i'm gonna go to hell if mm -hmm. whatever um i'm not saying one is better than the other but it, that's something to respect from someone that doesn't believe in god is they're still trying to be moral and good regardless of any future consequence just because it's the right thing to do and i think there's something for us to learn from that absolutely mm -hmm. if that's our only motivation is doing good is to avoid punishment if there's no love behind that, that's, I don't think that's what God wants for us no. either. So I think there's super important truths that we can learn from everyone. If we weren't religious, would we still be doing the things that we do? That's, that's a, a great, great question. That's a great question, yeah. I've met people um, after moving out to Utah where I tell them I'm a convert and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so brave of you. Because I think if I wasn't born into this church, I would have never converted. Or right. I think mm -hmm. like it would have been too hard and I wouldn't have done it. And to me, that just makes me think have you reflected on that have you thought about why you think that like if you weren't born into it you wouldn't be here because 
that speaks a lot to what you might be feeling internally mm-hmm. about being here. And I don't know, it's just a chance for self-reflection, you know? Because we're all converts. Yes, every single Everyone's one of us. A convert. It's, and it's an That's ongoing facts. process. Again, like trials come in life, your testimony wavers. It's, it's your, as your testimony grows and you grow, you're going to have to face certain things. And whether you're a lifelong member or not, and I just feel like that question of, would I be here if I wasn't born into the church? Um, is something very important to think about. The last thing that I want to bring up is where we need to rely on absolutes, right? Because if your testimony or or your belief in truth is is founded on the wrong thing and that thing moves, you're in danger of falling apart, right? Mm-hmm. Like the only major certainties, at least in our church, that I can think of are the Book of Mormon and Jesus Christ. And if your testimony is founded on that, everything else kind of falls into place. Mm-hmm. But if you're if you're reliant on a political belief or one person in the church or your bishop or whatever. Or a specific policy. Those can all yeah. change, mm-hmm. right? And we're not God, and so we can't see what is changeable and what's necessarily not. Uh, but we've been promised that the Book of Mormon is the keystone and the Bible is uh, the scripture in general is something that we can rely on and Jesus Christ. And it all points back to him. And I think that's the goal with all the policies is point back to the savior and make him the center. And you're never going to be led astray and stay curious, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like assume you don't know everything and be willing to change when you learn something new and, and then you're not going to be thrown about when stuff gets crazy. Well, yeah. And like having questions and seeking after more truth, that's only going to help you especially if you're taking the right approach and like trusting good sources, then your testimony is only going to grow from there. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's centered and everything points towards Christ, you're going to be just fine and you're going to keep growing. Right. With that, thanks everyone for joining in for this episode of Saints Inscripted. If you have any thoughts or want to continue this discussion in the comments, please feel free to leave something. But thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.